So today, I want to have a very frank conversation with you about a problem that many, many golfers have, which is releasing early. Now, you've probably, if you've been around golf long enough, heard that term releasing early. And I don't know if you've ever had a lesson from another professional uh, about how to solve this issue, but I, it, it amazes me that the golf industry hasn't figured out the problem here. And, and the reason they haven't solved that one, and, and the reason I know they haven't solved it is because I hang around instruction groups all the time, and nobody seems to be able to solve the most common issue in, in the golf swing, which is releasing early. And it's really kind of interesting because it's probably one of the easiest things to solve. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do, but it's the, 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 the solution is very, very simple. If you're one of the guys that releases early, and you'd probably know this if you hit the ball fat, uh, you hit, you, you maybe even, so you probably, let me explain what releasing early is, and then it'll, I'll show you what, caught, what happens at all in the process here. But releasing early is when the hands, when you, know, you create this angle in the swing, which is this, or the arm folds, and it creates what we call leverage in the club. And then as you come down, you want the club to come down, and then the, the angle to actually release about here, the hands see are leading, and then you compress the ball, and then the hands release after. So, so you get compression and then extension. That's correct. Now, what people get, what a lot of people do, is they release this angle, this angle that's supposed to be releasing here, they release it back here, or here, or even here. So you get a release early, and what it causes is obviously uh, topping the golf ball, um, it's when the hands break down. People talk, say, the hands are breaking down at impact. That's the release early. Or you can hit behind it even. You can hit behind it. So there's a lot of things that, um, a lot of effects of releasing early. So um, you can slice it too because what happens is, is you're coming down. The club's coming from an outside path. If you hit the club face, it's coming from the outside path and it slices or pulls the ball. Well, it's really a common, common error. Now, it's amazing how simple the solution to this is, but let me just go give you some background on this. The, the, I want to talk about biomechanics. Now, do not let that term scare you off. I, I get tired of people telling me, well, you've overcomplicated this. It, you, look, biomechanics is simply the study of motion and uh, human motion. And if you understand motion, you can then fix the motion and it fixes the problem. It's, it's, just, it's just quantifying the motion is all biomechanics is. It's putting, a, it's, put, it's, it's putting a number so we can measure and quantify so we're not guessing anymore. So we're taking the guesswork out of the instruction. So that's what biomechanics is and don't let it get confusing. So anybody who I've worked with with the biomechanics stuff will tell you that it instantly cl clarifies what's going on because they can actually fully grasp exactly what the differences are between before and after. So let's talk biomechanics. Now, the solution to releasing early is not the fact that you're releasing early. It's the fact that the release is happening here versus happening here. It's where it's releasing, not when necessarily. So that is how we solve this. And uh, I'm amazed the golf industry hasn't figure this out, but they don't spend enough time studying biomechanics is why. So let's talk about how, how I solve this for you. Now, if you're a person that releases early, let me tell you what you 99% of the chance that you're doing. And, and we'll, we'll go into some of this in, in a little bit of explanation. Most people over rotate their body into the backswing. They think a longer backswing is better and they over rotate, which causes an under rotation at impact. And you know, if you've ever heard me teach before, impact is the most important moment of the swing. We, we gotta make that one good at impact. And what I mean, and what you see is people will do this. They take the club back way too over-rotated, way too far, and when they come down, they under-rotate. Now, in biomechanic terms, under-rotation or lack of rotation is something slowing down because in biomechanics, the way you speed things up is you rotate. So the way you speed the arms up, the way you speed the body up, is you turn it. You stabilize it and you turn it. That's the way you speed things up. If you s stop rotation, you're slowing things down in the, in the swing. And, there, and the body needs to do both, speed up and slow down during a golf swing. So what's happening, if you think about that, a release early is when the body, okay, the body is rotating and it's slowing down too soon and the arms go speed up too fast. So what happens is the torso doesn't get turned and the arms go and the release happens there. 
And let me tell you the easiest solution in the world. Easiest solution in the world here is, and you're gonna be surprised at this, is to shorten the backswing and then release the club later. And I'll tell you how to do that. I'm gonna quantify this for you. The, the answer is a longer backswing is not the answer. Taking it back further is the wrong answer. As a matter of fact, you need to reduce the amount of rotation in the torso and the backswing, and then increase the amount of rotation and impact. Here's my numbers for you, and this is the studies I do in biomechanics. Number one, the, the people who release early have too much backswing rotation. Most of the time, they have over 85 degrees of torso rotation. If you have over 85 degrees of torso rotation in the backswing, they gen generally have five to 10 degrees of impact rotation. Add 85 and 15, and you get 100 uh, degrees of rotation total. So if you have 85 back here and 15 here, a total of 100 degrees. So a guy who rotates and thinks he's getting speed, 85, that's lots of rotation, and then he gets 15, has a total of 100 degrees of rotation from backswing to impact. Okay, pretty easy math, right? And that's kind of what I see in my data. Here's my golf swing. I have 75 degrees of rotation in my backswing, so 75, right? And 35 at impact. 75 plus 35 is what? 110. So there's your data. 100, you want 85 in the backswing and then 15, or you want 75, 35? And the answer is you want 75, 35. And here's why, because the 35 is accelerating rotation. I'm going from 35 to 90 in my finish. So I'm, the, the rotation is increasing. It's not decreasing. Does that make sense? So it's accelerated rotation through impact. So here is the solution if you release early. And if you're watching this video and you're a guy who releases early, this could be the most important dang video you ever watch. And I, I know this is gonna help you. Here's what you need to do. You need to take the club back shorter than you ever thought you took it back. So what I mean by that is you need to take it back to about right here. Don't go back further. Don't over rotate. Feel like you're not, feel like you've, you're limiting all this rotation. Don't rotate very much. And then from there, you need to go ahead and, and rotate all the way through. So we need to take a short backswing and then rotate. Because what's gonna happen is we gotta get you short enough to where you, you, can, you can rotate accelerated through impact. We gotta rotate you. That's what you're missing if you release early. Short backswing, better rotation, club moves easily through the ball and you get lots of speed. So there's your solution for an early release. Could be the most important video you ever watch.